welcome back. So I'm now joined on the sofa by Christopher Paul Jones. Chris is a specialist in fears and phobias at Harley Street. So if you have any fears and phobias, don't go anywhere. Good evening, Chris. Hi there. So how long have you been working at Harley Street? Well, I've been doing phobias and therapy work for about 10 years now, but I've been about Harley Street for a couple, about two years now. So I've been based there. And, and what was it that took you into fear and phobias? I had a few of my own. I had quite a lot of my own okay. when, I, when I first started on this sort of therapy coaching journey. So overcoming them and then helping other people, it was kind of really rewarding. Yeah. And uh, helping people make a difference, yeah. What, really what are fears and phobias? Well, I think a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I've got a fear of flying or I've got a fear of spiders or I've got a phobia. And what they and it can be anything from from literally, they, you say the word and they're frozen, to, oh, I just don't like it. Now, it, a fear tends to be, as I said before, like a fear of the unknown, a little bit of you know uncertainty, when a phobia is an emotional response. So right. it's, it's not logical, it's not rational. And um, very often when people come with phobias, if they're very in their head, they're very logical, they, they, they go, I know it doesn't make any sense, I know it's not logical, but they've got, it's emotional. And yeah. they're, trying to, they're trying to reason their way out of an emotional so response. So phobia is more mental? It's, it, it's more physical, it's more that it's an emotional response, so yeah. it's a learned behavior that's just automated. So the second you see something, hear the word, you react, and right. it's, it's kind of hardwired. And, and that's the phobia. Yeah, that's the phobia. And then the fear comes after. Uh, well, yeah, a fear is more just uncertainty, fear of the unknown. So sometimes with a fear, it's just not enough information. And by facing it or, or talking around it, going, knowing the statistics, that can help. But when it's a full-blown phobia, that tends not to make a difference. Mm. So you, you actually need to change the emotions. Yeah. Have you got phobias then, Joy? Spiders. Spiders. I know, I know it doesn't make sense, as you just said. Yes. I know it doesn't make sense because they're tiny, but... Okay. But so a lot of people have phobias it, from yeah. spiders. Spi yeah. It's so silly, isn't it? Spiders is quite a common one. So yeah. when did it start? I, I won't go into a full intervention. I mean, always, always. I can't ever... I just shivered now thinking about really? spiders. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... What do we do? So what I would do with the client, if I could do a quick yes. demonstration. So if you would imagine um, uh, a spider, right? Yeah, yeah very good. Oh, you see, <laughs> I don't know if you so can you saw that on camera, you see the eyes feel suddenly your went there, there. Then. Right, what I want you to do is you, you, you had a picture there. You, you made yeah. an emotion, yeah, right. I want you to take that picture and make it black and white. Okay. Okay, and I want you to push that picture over in the distance. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. Over there? Yeah. Right, now I want you to add in some circus music. Right, very good. Okay. <laughs> so she's laughing. Yeah. So already you're getting her to yeah, think differently. Yeah. So just just by changing uh, those few how we store information can instantly change how you feel. So if you, I mean, you know. So next time you see a spider, you I'll have to think of him. Think of circus, circus, circus music. Okay. I mean, the key really is to go back to the first event because what happens is something's happened in our past. So with fear of flying, you're eight years old, you have a turbulent flight, you link in your mind. Flying equals danger. Yes. And then whenever, you know, 20, 30 years on, whenever you think about flying, your mind is actually Going remembering that event. Yes. Yeah. Without you being well, conscious. And a lot of and a lot of food habits and people's eating habits go back to childhood as yes, well. Absolutely. And it's a habit, yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Isn't it? You know, we need to break these habits. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have a have a little fear of flying. Oh yes. Which has got better over okay. the years. Um, but I was flying back and forth from Spain on my own you know many years ago and it was on one flight I just thought oh my goodness if this I have no one with me if I go down I'm going down on my own I don't know anyone on this plane yes yeah, yeah and suddenly I think we had a little bit of a turbulence in the in the aircraft and I felt really vulnerable yes and the two people I was sat next to this was the time this was the day when people were smoking on planes they were you know they were chuffing away they were <laughs> handing out sweets that I was making me feel nauseous and then the, the, they saw my fear and put me in the middle of them. Yeah. And they were holding my hand as, oh. as we went into land. And I was just like, get me off, get me off. And then after that, I, I developed this fear. And, yes. I, and I remember very clearly in Spain, I would not get on one plane. And I stayed in Spain. Wow. Or maybe I stayed in Spain because I didn't want to come back. But I don't know. <laughs> no, I did. I didn't want to get back on that plane. And, and, I let, and I waited the next day until I got back on it. And I reasoned with myself. But I've, but I've kind of uh, helped myself over the years. Yes. And you know, I try to live without fear and, and get on planes, and I won't won't ever now restrict myself mm. from flying. But the, that takeoff sensation for me. Well, I think with flying, it, it it's it's not actually one phobia. So spiders tends to be the way they move. With flying, loss, fear of loss of control, fear of confined spaces, fear of heights. So there's actually often several phobias 
uh, entwined in it basically and some people it's the sound so it's the seatbelt sign comes on that ding sound and they suddenly get the emotional response. For other people, it's that sensation of lifting up, or the engine noise. So the all these power different of triggers. Lifting up, that's, what, that's what does it for me. Yeah, yeah. And everyone says, this is the best bit. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I have undone my seatbelt and walked up the aisle and take off. I have to get off, sorry, get, get me off the plane. Yeah. And it's caused chaos. <laughs> um, but no, I, I am a lot better and I'm a lot more comfortable. And you know, like I say, I won't stop my fears. Okay. So how would you help your co uh, clients overcome all these stresses? How many sessions would they have with you? It's, if you can find, I mean, everyone's different. And, yes. and uh, um, you know, there's lots of different ways to approach uh, a fear. There's lots of different techniques. So everyone's different, but normally one session, normally one session of up wow. to two hours. Because if you can get those first trigger responses and then play with them, and we were just doing a little bit here, just a very basic version, but if you change and scramble those patterns, then the emotion you link will completely change. Yes. So I had a, I had a female client um, come to me a while back and I and I said and she was terrified of turbulence and I just basically conditioned it and I said think of looking into your partner's eyes that was the PG for 13 version she had a a more intimate uh, memory but I didn't want to know I was like, no, don't tell me. it's fine <laughs> um, but she focused on that. <laughs> and, then, and then I conditioned it and then I said think about that now think about flying think about that and think about flying yes. or oh, specifically turbulence in that case and then she emailed me the other week and was like, oh, now I look for, I get really excited when turbulence is happening. Because <laughs> she she's now of her changed those associations. And she thinks, yeah. thinks about that situation. Yeah. So it's whatever, mo it's like, as I say, love and, love and fear can't exist in the same place, you know, okay. happiness and fear. So, so if you're you overwrite one, the yeah. fear. So how would a spider, someone who fears spider, put love into that? So by well, but by, by I mean one of the things is to make it funny. That that's one way, you know, to change, to scramble yeah, those patterns, yeah. make it humorous. I mean, it'd be interesting to know when it first started. With spiders, it's often uh, watching the parents as well. It can often be so your parents reacted. Yeah, probably negatively. My mother, I think, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. it's kind Maybe of parents. Yeah. and people <laughs> often follow what their parents did. So as a yes. child, you you model. So you look around and go, how should I be reacting? And you see your parents doing this. You go, oh, I should. So be scared. you should be yeah. doing that. Yeah. yeah. So my mother has a fear of lift. Still has. Oh, okay. And that that rubbed off on me. Yeah. Huh? Send it to me. Yeah, <laughs> that rubbed <laughs> off on me, but yeah. I now have made sure since I've had a child that I'm not going to have that fear because I don't want to give it to her. Yes. So yeah. I get on lifts, and, and I'm fine with lifts. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. But she's claustrophobic, and I guess you see a lot of people who are just very claustrophobic. Yes, yeah, claustrophobia is a big one. I mean, I think with flying, the, one of the triggers when the door shuts, it, is that's, a that's a big one. Yeah, it's a claustrophobic. They're like, oh, I'm trapped, and I, I now can't mm. get off. So that's quite common. But yeah, claustrophobia. Is, is a common one as well, common fear. Yeah. And I guess with the world the way it is at the moment, with the flying, people yes. are more fear are full of flying and yes. also public transport. Yes, yeah. Well, I think the, fl the thing do about it. Do you see more people now? Um, I do, yeah. It, it's unfortunate. So, like, I was speaking to someone today and going, What do you do? I go, Well, I do fears and phobias, and one of my specialties is flying. And they go, Oh, but you get more work this time yes. of year. And it's, um, yeah, more people come to see me, which I guess for a business point of view is good, but yes. not, not for the general public. But it's still, it's, it's, it's knowing that they make big news. Yeah, when, a, when, a plane, when something happens to a plane, it makes big news. Yes. But obviously, if you look at it logically, uh, statistically, you've got more chance of you know, something happening on the way to the airport, driving to the yes. airport. You've got more chance of, of having a heart attack from the stress of constantly thinking about your fear. You've got more chance of, I saw a statistic the other day, more chance of uh, being injured falling out of bed than you have on a plane. <laughs> really? But you don't see many people with a fear of sleeping. I mean, there is a few, but it's, it's not as common. So it, it's just because it makes big headlines, so people go, oh, yeah. I, sh I should be afraid. Yes. So, but yeah, it's still one of the safest ways. So tell me about you yeah. and your background and what brought you into doing this. Well, I used to do this for a living, actually. Long time ago, I was in video and I ended up working for a, a well-known therapist, stroke hypnotherapist, um, filming for him. And I was just watching him do these amazing things. And I was like, I want to learn that. So that, that's how I started. And then I learned all these different processes from cognitive behavioral therapy to hypnotherapy. And all these other things, and um, so you're qualified in hypnotherapy. In hypnotherapy, yeah. I, I, when 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 you say hypnotherapy to people, they often think of stage hypnosis, which is very different. Yeah. Because what a, what well, I clinical hypnotherapy. Yeah, clinical hypnotherapy. So it's it's connect. So there's that part of you, as I say, the unconscious that deals with emotion. Yes. And we're not taught to communicate with that. We're taught to deal in logic and rationale in most of our lives. Yes. 
Um, but where our fears are, where our phobias are, where all the things that get us what we want and don't are in, are in the unconscious. Yes. So the more you can tap into that and communicate with it, the more in control and free you can be. So, but some people are scared of the term hypnosis because yeah. they think, oh, you're going to make me think I'm a chicken or something. Yeah. But I, I use that. So I use that in combination with other things. Yes. But as I say, and I, I ended up um, filming from a helicopter one time. So I was actually harnessed to the outside of a helicopter. Um, and I had a you know, terrifying fear of flying, so that was kind of, as I learned... that's how they helped you get over it? Well, no, I... I oh, uh, well, I don't, don't want to go I, see I, that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd done this, so I had a little bit of a fear. So what happens? I had a little bit of a fear, and then I got harnessed... you didn't have outside. a lot of a fear <laughs> yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah. Well, and, and then actually afterwards, like, after they dropped off, I didn't see it, but half an hour later, the helicopter actually crashed. <gasps> um, after so, they dropped you off? Yeah. So literally half an hour later. Well, that would have been it. Yeah, no, exactly. And I was, uh, but, so it went from being a tiny dot, which is often what happens. You have a little inkling of, oh, is this safe? And then something gets stacked on top and you get the references. Oh, um, and then I was terrified to the point where I was like, I, I'm never getting on any plane or anything again. Um, so it was these processes that really helped me um, scramble and change that. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I've got to help people with this. And, and so, and then you went off and did your training yes, and, and yeah. bought the company. So what's your top tip for anyone with one top tip to give anyone? One top tip. Well, I, I will say this. I will say often people think they can catch an emotion. So they think it's like a cold. So yes. they go, oh, what if, it, what if I get scared again? Yes. And in order to feel fear, you need to be thinking a certain way. So you need to have a belief. You need to be saying something in your head. Yeah. You need to be picturing something and you need to be having an emotion and even breathing a certain way. So if you change any one of those patterns, if you distract yourself, you're going to feel differently. Okay. So I think it's to tell people... So distract yourself. Well, I think to tell people that they're in control of their emotions. So more yes. of the, like we're doing... You're if right, you just, you are in control. The quick one is, is the self-talk. So if someone's chatting in their head going, oh my God, this plane might crash. Yeah. Then just go, okay, what if that was Mickey Mouse telling you? Okay. So <laughs> yeah, so try and make it crash. funny. Yeah, yeah, the, play with so that. So I think yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer on that, but of course, you know, I can change my emotion, but someone else is still flying that plane. Yeah. Ah, so that's that's the a, so that's thing. the fear of loss of control. And so, the, so, so if we were to have time, I'd go. So when did that fear of loss yeah. of control start? But I'm getting and, better. And then there'd be techniques for for letting go of that need to be to always know. I, I think the thing I would add, if if we have time, is I'm, the, we're going to have to start wrapping up. Okay. Now. Oh well. Uh, next time then. Next time. <laughs> next time we'll have a feature on it. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Uh, Chris, and thank you very much to you, Joy. I hope you can overcome your fear of spiders. So do I. <laughs> if you'd like to contact us, you can contact us via Twitter at That's Oxing. You can email talk at that's oxfordshire.tv or you can call 01865 50 5701 00. I'll see you next time. <laughs>